Whoa! Are we back in Elden Ring? My sight! Oh. My sight! It's paranormal. Par My sight is paranormal. You can only... When you open your eyes, all you can see is the movie Paranorman. I can only watch Paranorman, the movie that was made by... Who, who Burton? made that Tim one? Burton? Tim Burton? Was that a Tim Burton? I wanted to say Neil Gaiman, but I knew that wasn't right. Is it right. Neil Gaiman? Was Could it be. right? Was it Neil Gaiman? Oh. It's who all did I it? can who see. Did Paranorman? Like a... Like a what? <laughs> like a movie. That's what it is. Looks like a Neil Gaiman. It wasn't either of them. It was just like a... Oh! I can see it, but I can't see the studio. <laughs> Only the movie. I thought there was a big name on Paranorman. I thought there was too. Are we thinking of something else? Are we thinking of Frankenweenie? Are we thinking of Frankenweenie? Are, Are we, we thinking of... Um, Monster House, whatever that one is. Monster Horners? Monster Haunters? Are we thinking of Monster Haunters? Is it Monster Haunters? Like, I just want to point thinking? out. Or Corp Corpse Broad? I know, I know Coraline. Oh, Tim, Frank and Weenie was Tim Burton. There we go. But who did Monster Haunters? <laughs> who did Monster Haunters? <laughs> um, I want it to be known that I'm doing Julia cosplay tonight. That's true. This is an outfit Julia wears frequently. Not the these are my versions of the pieces, not her pieces this time. Yeah, not my pants, not my shirt. But I rarely get to wear this outfit because Julia's always wearing it. It's my favorite outfit. So today I'm wearing it, baby. And I took Julia's earrings. He did take my earrings. To complete are mine. the cosplay look. Didn't Can't that something? And then Julia is wearing a t-shirt. A Nighthawk t-shirt, which is a, a cool movie theater we have here in New York. New York City. If you saw that Netflix show that was canceled about the guy who lives in the house by himself. The guy who lives in the house. And has to look at the tapes and then he meets the lady in the tapes, but it's like current her and not 20 year old her. Talking about Neil Gaiman? You're talking about Paranormal? It's like Area 51. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, signal 92. <laughs> si twin um, Why are we the oldest people? Archive 81. Thank archive you. 81. Yeah. Area 51. Yeah, Archive 81. He's wearing this shirt in like the first time you see him. Right. In the yeah. first episode, he's wearing a Nighthawk shirt. I remember because I saw him wear it and I went, that's Nighthawk. Nighthawk rules. Yeah. Um, it's also a really good podcast. Yeah, I think it was based on the podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the show was great. And then... Uh, I've, I've got a short anecdote. Okay. Before we begin playing the game. Oh, okay. And it's that um, I was playing Final Fantasy fourteen today as oh, I yes. as I do. I was mindlessly leveling some alt jobs, so I was playing my my dragoon. Mm -hmm. I jumped into a party, and then like halfway through the dungeon, someone in the party said, "Tell me, boy, are you Jacob Drawfee?" And I was like, "Oh my god, I've been noticed!" And then I looked at their name, and their name was Twimble Lemon Cakes. And I was like, "Oh my god, it's Twimble! It's real Twimble!" Twimble. And uh, I just thought that was very. Very fun. Twimble has to work to defeat the boss. Thank you, Lovesick, for the raid. Um, I also thought it was really funny that Twimble was a dark knight. Twimble was a a little a little Lalafell dark knight. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, hinting at Twimble's dark dark style, dark side. This is what Twimble does to relax after the bakery. Twimble must release his rage. Joy. Twi Twimble's anger knows Come no here. bounds. This is what happens when you don't pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have enough money to live. I must earn money defeating the boss. <laughs> I turn into a robot when I do the Twimble voice. It's hard. You got to really walk the line. Yeah. Like Johnny Cash did when he did the Twimble voice. And when he didn't, he didn't Johnny Cash out his bill to Twimble. So true. 
Um, can I have headphones, please? Yes, I forgot to get them. Thank you. Somebody said Twimble's in the Todd FC with uh, Pepperoni. Yeah, I did. We did talk, discuss that because Twimble said they were going to talk to the Todd FC. Didn't the other people in your party also know Droppy? Thank you. One of the other people in the party did, yeah. That's great. And the other person just kept saying, I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was in an Overwatch match the other night, and this person, every time they died, I was playing Mr. Heroes. Every single time this person died, they did, they wrote a line in chat of um, Hallelujah. <laughs> so when I queued in, it, uh, the only thing I saw in chat was, I heard there was a secret chord. And then someone else came in with that David played and it pleased the Lord. And then <laughs> that guy just kept putting lines just in every time going. he was dead. And he was dead a lot. He was so focused on the, the hallelujah lines. Oh, yeah. Olive is there. People are pointing out um, Olive. Can you are you allowed to server transfer in in Final Fantasy 14? Because I feel like I would much rather transfer and join Todd FC than be where I am right now, alone and homeless. Well, if um, your server's uh, hours are over, they usually transfer you over to a new server. Oh, I see. Like at a restaurant. Yeah. It costs money. I got money. I can pay the money. Is it real money? Real money, yeah. How much real money is it? It's probably like 20 bucks if I had to guess. Um, Todd FC is on Bryn Hilder, yeah. If you're playing Final Fantasy 14 and want to play with, uh, with Drawfees. It's free if you go from a popular server to a preferred one. Oh, I don't know if that's the case. I'll look into it and I'm, maybe I'll switch. Apparently, it's around 20 bucks, so. <laughs> Damn, brag about your transfer money. That's right. I got transfer money. I'm 34 years old. I got enough money to transfer servers. Who's going to stop me? Uh, anyways. Do you see her little tail? Yeah, Olive's cute. Every time we sit here now, she goes straight there. Have you noticed that recently? Yeah, she does like to be right there. It's and really her face cute. is just on camera, too. It's good. Um, the game tonight. Uh, par par the the <laughs> vision that makes you only see paranormal. It's paranormal. Say. Kaz said Jacob pays me, so he definitely has trans money. <laughs> 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 That's bars, Kaz. Dropping bars in the chat. Yeah. Um, this game is a visual novel. It is a horror game. It's got a super cool visual style that I really like. I told Julia about it because I was like, maybe you'd want to play it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it also is a mature rated game. I think it's got some troubling things in it. We're going to have the content warning on screen, but do make sure. It's got Danganronpa vibes, so. Do make sure to check the warnings. Make sure to um, on, check on Does on, Does the Dog Da. Does the Dog Da. Does the Dog Da. Dog the Dog Da. We hopefully won't see the most troubling of them, but we might. So, you know, Yeah, we don't know exactly what uh, is going to happen in it, but I, I've been excited to play it because it just looks really cool. And I love mm -hmm. stuff with this sort of like vibe and aesthetic. So we'll have the content warning at the top. But as usual, we don't list the exact things that are in it because sometimes that triggers people in general. So and also, I don't want to know what's in it. Yeah, I want to be I want to go in blind. So yeah, and Draz always does the timestamps for the YouTube VOD. So if you are interested in this game, but you know, don't want to risk it, watch the VOD. Yeah, you can watch up the on VOD. Secret Sleepover on YouTube. So uh, you can catch it there and we don't blame you if you want to duck. Excuse me, Olive. Sorry. <laughs> Olive's like, my bed. <laughs> Sorry, I just reached over you a little bit. You're messing with my lights. Look at her tail. Why is it? It's totally up, but she's lying down. I can tell that's going to be a bit too loud. So we'll adjust that. Um, you all ready to play? Draz, sorry, yeah, one last thing. Draz pointed out the uh, amazing teamwork between Draz and Kaz to do the foot counter on the Oxen Free 2 stream. Amazing. I saw it in the VOD. I saw the VOD. It was great. That's so good. Yeah. 
All right, let's get to it. I'm unmuting the game. You'll hear the spooky music. Do you ah. want to? Do you want to exit OBS? I accidentally clicked the X on OBS. <laughs> I almost closed the whole stream. <laughs> that would have been something. All right. You check the options, I'm guessing? I did, yeah. All right, let's get into it. Let's go. I'm excited. I've been wanting a good spooky game that isn't the bunker. The bunker. Ah, you are here. Welcome, welcome. Jacob, we're back in... Oh. Um, Is that clarinet? Got a little clarinet action. Let's go. I have been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Oh. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the storyteller. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I shall be your guide going forward. I love this outfit. Yeah, that's dope. Now then, before we begin our story, there are several things I must bring to your attention. Like my outfit. Do you like it? Do you like it? First, this game uses autosave. What psycho game does not have autosave anymore? Let's be real. The game will automatically save at regular intervals, so you may stop playing at any time. Saving is a very important element of games. <laughs> <laughs> it is the only way to keep your memories in place. Damn, I forget to save every night. That explains a lot. If you do not wish to rely on autosave alone, you can also save manually via the menu. Next, please look at the upper right of the screen. This is the menu button. Oh. Whoa. I love a mysterious text. From here, you can check the text log, view useful files, and switch auto mode on and off. You can also adjust the brightness, volume, and other settings in the options menu. For instance, if there is a voice you would prefer not to hear, you can mute it by setting the voice volume to zero. I don't hear any voices right now other than my own, motherfucker. Yeah, is that, um... No, it's not. I, I've already been in there. I suggest you check the brightness, controls, and other settings now before going on. That's the first thing I did when I opened the game. Do you think they want you to use a controller? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can. We, should we use the controller? I love this music. It's, it's really jaunty, to be honest. Okay. I will explain other essential functions when the time is right. Ah, there is one more thing I wish to confirm before we continue. It would feel strange to go on without knowing your name. Please, tell me what I may call you. Oh, our name? It's, um... No, I don't think that's it. I think it's Yamley. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Yeah, that's great. That's that perfect. <laughs> that's just how I wanted it. <laughs> Yamley with an EY. It's very important to me. No, an EY! Don't put two E's. Why are you going back so far? <laughs> just... Can you just, can you just type it? <laughs> can you just type it? <laughs> just type it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I see, Pasta Fox, is it? We didn't type that, we typed Yamley. <laughs> what the hell? I'm so glad my Steam name isn't like, Farts McGillicuddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, that was good. After all of that, typing the name. I for know, him to just go, you just ignored I'm it. I'm going to ignore that. That's a stupid name. Hmm? 
Are you certain you wish to be called Pasta Fox? No. I want to be called Yamly. Oh, how rude of me. Please pardon my mistake. Trans people trying to interact with the government. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure that's what you said, but it seems I was wrong. What came over me? Let me try again. You wish to be called Yamly? Yes. Asshole. <laughs> I see. Very good. I seem to have gotten it right this time. All right, now that we've been properly introduced, let us begin our story. Ahem. From antiquity to present day, regardless of how society and civilization evolve, death has been a constant presence that none have ever escaped. Whether it is one's own or that of someone close, death is always a difficult thing to accept. This is an immutable reality, a value shared by all, no matter the age in which they live. In fact, oral traditions reflecting people's fears and prayers regarding death still remain, ghosts, spirits, and so on. Similarly, in attempt to defy death, many curses, rituals, and customs have been born, from burning spirit incense to summoning the souls of the dead. Some of those secret arts are still being passed down to this day. Ah, on that note, Yamli. This may seem rather abrupt, but... Is there someone you wish to bring back from the dead? What if... What if you had one chance to use the secret art of resurrecting the dead? Rudy, you coming back! <laughs> Your dog? <laughs> Rudy's coming back, y'all! You got to meet my border collie! But for how long? Does he have to just die again? Later? He's coming back! <laughs> Yes, if you had the power to bring someone back to life one time and one time only. Oh, it's Twimble, the ocean in motion. It was very nice to meet you in the game. I'm so glad we ran into each other. Thanks for stopping in the stream. I'm going to transfer to Todd. This is what I've revealed on stream tonight. I'm coming to Bryn Hilder and I'm joining Todd. Anyways. What would you do, Yamli? I'd use it if I had to sacrifice myself. I'd use it if I have to sacrifice someone. I'd use it if it came at no cost. I wouldn't want it let someone else have it. If someone else has it, they could summon someone bad. They could true. summon someone better. But you know who's a true net good? Rudy. My old dog! Rudy, your old dog? Rudy's coming back! What if we say we'd use it if it came at no cost? That seems selfish. What do you mean? That's the best option we have. You want to sacrifice someone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it should be worth something. They're saying if you had the option to do this. Okay. I'd use it if it came at no cost. I wouldn't use it if I had to sacrifice someone else. Or myself. Mm. Are you saying you would sacrifice someone else or yourself? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Oh god. Rudy's coming back! <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> I would die for Rudy. He didn't like that answer. I don't care what he likes. I see. Very interesting. Yes, yes. That is what I thought you would say. Hmm. What seems to be the matter? Ah, you want to know what this box that has been sitting here is? <laughs> Television. That's a TV. I know what it is. I grew up in the 90s. You ass. It's quite the curious thing, isn't it? This is called a color television. The world I will be sending you to is full of devices as such as this that do not exist in the age you are from. You want to check yourself? Or you wreck yourself? In this era, a color television can be found in nearly every household. Okay, so we're in the 90s in the game. I oh, take it. okay. All right. That is not all, for example, or the 80s. If a person should wish to contact someone while they're out of their home. Oh, there's phone booths. Yeah, we're definitely like 90s, 90s and beyond. They use public telephones like this that can be found all over the city. Can you imagine what life would be like in such a time? I'd be thrilled to have you continue this story, Yamli. After all, that is why you came here, no? So let us begin. I've kept you waiting long enough. I present to you Paranormasite, a bizarre tale surrounding the curse known as the Rite of Resurrection. 
a peculiar yarn ensnaring nine men and women in a fierce fight for their lives as it unravels. Some of the characters appearing within surely share your views on the right of resurrection. I imagine those who have lost someone dear to them will feel particularly strongly about it, clinging to it as their last desperate hope. I Listen, everyone wants to meet Rudy. That's Olive, fair. why are you so wet? The first I shall introduce, a man Olive. named Shogo Okie, is one of them. Shogo Okie. Sex, male, occupation, office worker. Shogo is an unremarkable young man entering his third year of working in the plant department of Hiyaku Soaps, a chemical company headquartered in Sumida. All right, this is this is fine. He goes with the flow. He's stereotypical. He's he's a normie. He can play Wonderwall. He's a normie boy. He he's can play looking Wonderwall. He's for a girlfriend. I'll please don't dig at my pants. Breaking news. Oh, I wonder what it could be at such a time. Early this morning, the body of a drowned man was discovered at a park in Sumida City. Police have identified no. the body of Shogo Oki. Oh shit, we just met him. <laughs> oh damn, we just met <laughs> you. And this is crazy, but you did. A 25 year old man who worked at a company in the area. As signs of struggle were found, the Sumida police suspect foul play and have launched an investigation. Ah! Oh, excuse me, please pay no mind to what you have just seen. Goodness, you very nearly saw something that would have spoiled the story. Just pretend you did not see that. Let us turn back time a smidge and start again from there. <laughs> hi, Olive. All hi, buddy. Your, hi, your buddy. Dang mind. Do you understand? You saw nothing. Just so everyone can see the cat. Hi, buddy. Hello. Hello. She's just rolling. You know nothing. I truly don't know anything. This story is a work of fiction. All locations, characters, organizations, legends, etc. that appear in this game have no relation to reality. If you couldn't tell by the fact that it is a cartoon. A video game? A video game cartoon. Shogo? Shogo, are you all right? She'll go to the polls. <laughs> She'll go yourself if you know where you are. Hey, can you hear me? Huh? Hey, that's not a proper answer. Earth to Shogo Okie. What do you think you're doing falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now, up with you, up. Okay, and there. How's that? All right. Do you feel dizzy? Do you have a headache? Are your humors off balance? You see what I mean about the visual style of this game? It's so cool looking. Yeah. I'm fine, I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors, though my head's still a little fuzzy. Office worker, Shogo, Okie. Normie, office worker. Uh oh, that doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit and see if you can walk all right. When the game is in your control, drag the screen or move the right stick to look around. Try looking around your surroundings now. Phone booth? Oh, I should ask chat because I saw um, Draz say it's so cool but rip to anyone who's sensitive to chromatic aberration. I can turn that off. So if anyone in chat is... Uh, ah! Ah, is affected negatively by the chromatic aberration i can we can turn that off in the menu if you'd prefer good good you seem to be fine what a relief do you remember anything like where we are and what we're what we were doing some people were saying it hurt their head all right, we can look at it without without it on. Do you mind going to the menu? Why? And the options. And the video. And then chromatic aberration. Yeah. Looks essentially the same to me. It really does. <laughs> Did I mess it up? 
Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, ads are going to start soon. Oh yeah, let's let's take a pause to looks better to people. Okay, people are saying it did help them. Oh, okay, great. Good, good. Oh my god, olives coming over. Yeah, I guess if it was like bothering you, you'd probably notice if it stopped bothering you. Like you and the. That would the, make um, it pretty apparent. What is it? The motion was it the the thing on the TV? Oh my god, motion smoothing on TVs. Yeah, motion smoothing. I don't understand how you don't see it. It's like absolutely insane to me. It's like so obvious to me the instant I see a TV that has it on mm -hmm. and I think it looks horrendous. I turn it off on people's TVs all the time. You turned it off on my parents' TV. <laughs> yep. Because people don't know it. They, don't, they can't tell a difference either way. But I can. Some people like it. It's, I don't know why you would like it. It looks horrendous. I think it depends what you're watching. Like my dad likes it for sports. Oh my god, I moved the controller over here so that Olive could lay down and then she just went where the controller was. Yeah, the soap opera effect. That's exactly it, Tiefling fan. It makes every show look like a soap opera. Like everything looks fake and weird. Do you want to read Oh ads? yeah, I gotta read subs. You mean subs? Okay. Thank you, thank you. We got subs here from Enigma88, Manders12, Kujoramzi, that's Cujo Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Jazz Fusion Deadhead. Animanimini. New and exciting types of frog. Cramburger. Rhymerel. Professor Rad gave out five gifted subs. Thank you. Necroyamser. Eureka. Erica is da bomb and loves Olive. Oh, that's nice. Aww. If she, you're talking about our cat. She lifted her head a little bit. She did. Uh, a Memasa, Six Eyed Rasmus, Teensy Valkyrie, A Sato gave out two gifted subs. Thank you. It's Loop Liches, Two Chonky, GPEL 47, Primordial Chaos Drag, Guy the Average, God Fear in. God Fear in Ed Sheeran, yeah. Professor Softboy, Oz Belmont, Riley Girl Boss, Emily Wiest, Babalith, Odin Sten, Actius Lunatic, Quiet Corviday. Lonely Dragon 49, Events Beyond Me, Dragon Named Friday, Dane Edge, Miss Frog Prince, Toasted Oats 42, Sugary Cutie, Sarcastic Avatar, Stay at Home Slug, Reba Reba Reba, Erica Oh No, Underwater Fungi Party, Snite 6, Aw Beans, T Power Dragon, Cepheus, Hannah Otaku Banana 12, Almansaurus Pex, Ego Dibol, Peanut, Spicy Batch. Sorry, I got emotional. The betch was too spicy. Izzy Busy, Deku Boya gave out five gifted subs. Thank you very much. Read Mark's Damage, Slump DBB, Baby Dwagon Age, Osiris Ran, Rando79, Transmutation, Change My Name as a Jacob, Velveeta's Mom has got it going on, A Pigeon Daddy, Oh Well It's Noel, Gib Sith, Nat Jenny, Proud Piper, O'Till, Fellow Lee, Mads and Max, Malignant Tuber, Claire Bear, Rip Charlie, Liz, Dreamy Kate, Heart Vale, Ying Doodles, Marliana, Annie Zan, Tango Maureen, Miss Raisin King, Hat Nat, Mossy Stone Media, Sax Rindell, Crush Bandicute. Back to the top. 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 Uh, uh, uh. SEB, Trans Dragon Lycantos, Double Forte, The Vibrarian, Phantom Theory gave out 10 gifted subs. Uh, Furder Birder, Meow Shali, Shiblings, Enigma88, Manders12. Okay, we got all those. All right, we're all set. Let's get back to it. Okie dokie. Okay. I'm ready. Um, the rite of resurrection? Or should I just say um, because I truly don't know. Well, we know it's the rite of resurrection, right? So we can say that. Huh? Wait a second. When did I tell you about that? I mean, I guess I must have, seeing as you know that name, but... 
Weird. Anyway, you see, you still seem a little out of it. Why don't you look around a bit more? Look around and select things you want to investigate. You can converse with people by selecting their faces. Hmm. hmm, where are we? All right, this is Sumida City, Tokyo. We're in Kinshibori Park near Kinshicho Station. Yoko brought me here saying she needed my help with something important. It's just past midnight. That explains why there's nobody else around. Files updated. That's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. Telephone booth. These telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on so they can be used in an emergency. I think someone asked if that was a dating sim. Is, is, is not a dating is sim. Not. Maybe a date with death, am I right? You right there. Uh, so hi. Yikes, that was close. If we died before we got our hands on the right of resurrection, everything would have been over before it started. What is recall down there? Ugh, I'm still a little woozy. What the hell is wrong with me? There's a girl here. Um, who is she? Not recalling uh, anything. Uh, you. Oh, that's Yoko Fukunaga. Good, at least I can remember that much. I first met her about a month ago. She's 23, works as a housekeeper, and is really into the occult. Can I just say thank you to this game for having adult characters? <laughs> You're really saving me a lot of trouble here. She's 12. No, no, she's not. She's 23, we're she, 25. She's 12, she's Everybody's adults. This is great, I'm, I'm thriving. If I think harder, I can probably recall a little more about what's going on. I just tried that dog. We've only met a few times, but we really hit it off. She's a lot of fun to be around. I have no idea how she feels though. I get the sense she isn't thinking about me that way right now. She's thinking about resurrecting someone, so yeah, yeah she's I think a she's, her mind is on some other things. But I know I've got a thing for bubbly girls who are into dark things like the occult. <laughs> such, <laughs> such a specific set of things. What? Paranormal fanatic, Yuko Fukunaga. Yoko Fukunaga, even. All right, now let's recall. Let me think, what can I remember? Okay, her name is Yoko Fukunaga. We met about a month ago. What's the deal with this park? Stare at her cheek really hard. It was around noon on one of my days off. I had just finished running some errands in Kinshicho and I was here taking a quick break. I was just looking around absent-mindedly. Oh, I'm looking around. I'm actively looking absent around. Absent-mindedly, please. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty absent. <laughs> Your mind is so absent. All right, too absent, too absent. <laughs> Ghost? Ghost children? Ah! When I noticed this girl loitering about, she was digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seemed to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. My curiosity got the better of me before long, and I struck up a conversation. Hey, are you... Looking for something? A mid, perhaps? Hmm? Ah, sorry. I must look like a total weirdo. Um, yeah, I guess you could say I'm looking for something. If you want, I could give you a hand. Really? I mean, that'd be a huge help, but... But? Are you really just a good Samaritan? Or are you after, you know, something else? Our music is too loud. It just keeps getting louder. This game is loud. Uh, and, and make sure you talk into the mic nice and good so that it 
dips the audio. Yeah. I don't want to close OBS. Stop trying to quit OBS. All right. I'm definitely a good spirit. Oh, wow. My hero. People like you really do exist. I think I might cry. Okay. I guess I'll let you help me. Be warned, you might regret what you've gotten yourself into. No worries. What are you looking for anyway? Did you lose a bracelet or something? Not exactly. I'm searching for one of the seven mysteries. Supposedly, this is the location of the Whispering Canal. The what? I've done it. I bet you think I'm some kind of lunatic. The seven mysteries of Hanjo. Do you know anything about it? I figured everyone around here would have at least heard of it, but I guess not. Hanjo is what the southern part of Sumida is called. A long time ago, this part of Tokyo was split into two separate cities. The north part was Mukojima, and the south part was Hanjo. Thank you. <laughs> its music is so loud in this part. It does. Keeps on going. Oh. Huh. Uh, am I boring you? Well, I'm not a local or anything. I just work around here. Oh, then no wonder you didn't know. Well, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo is a legend dating all the way back to the Edo period. Really? It's that old? That's like over 200 years ago. Oh, I've got your attention after all. I just assumed it was one of those fake stories made up to chase the occult craze. <laughs> I don't blame you. A lot of popular stories around here are pretty fishy. But the seven mysteries of Hanjo are different because they're all true. They're true? That's what I said. They're all real. They're all the real deal. They're the real deal. They're all, all, they're, they're, they're all, all of, they're all of them all are the real L deal. Here, deal. All. Listen. It's the deal here. Real. So, hold on. What does that mean? Are you telling me there's actually paranormal stuff at work in this park? Yep, pretty much. But there's got to be some... There's got to be more to it. After all I've done, I still haven't found a thing. That was the first time I met Yoko Fukunaga. We exchanged contact information and we've talked on the phone a few times since. We even met in person once or twice. But she never brought up the Seven Mysteries of Honjo again. I figured she'd gotten bored of it. Until today, when all of a sudden she decided to resume her search. Huh? Wait a second. Where did Yoko go? Found her. There she is. She's back to digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seems to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. No animal needs that much petting. Um. Olive does. <laughs> I think we got new surroundings we can yeah. look at. I was just actually looking at it. According to Yoko, the Whispering Canal, one of the seven mysteries of Honjo, is around here somewhere. It's apparently the story that the expression left at the canal originally comes from. I think I left myself a note about it. I should check my files. Wow. The Whispering Canal. An enduring superstition, formerly known as Kinshibori, many fishermen once gathered on this section of the canal that ran through Honjo. As their days came to a close and the fishermen gathered up their catches, a terrifying voice would rise up from the canal whispering, Leave it behind! Leave it behind! Those who ignored the voice found themselves unable to move and their previously full baskets of fish emptied. They would then be dragged into the canal. Sorry, dragged into Heat Canal. Never to <laughs> return. This strange phenomenon continued to occur, and the people began to call this body of water the Whispering Canal. This canal is gendered. Please respect it. Heat Canal. Heat Canal. Um, okay, cool. I think that's all we needed to read, right? Yeah, I just want to click these so that they're no longer red. Sure. Oh, the list of oh. the mysteries. The Whispering Canal, the Fool's Procession. That's me. The Beckoning Light, the Haunting Clappers. That's me. Yay. Boo. Boo. Yay. 
the evergreen beach, the Taiko of Tsugaru, the foot washing mansion, the one sided reed, the ever burning lantern. Does the mansion wash your feet or is it like the only thing that happens at the mansion? It's a really good question. According to this little picture, there's like a giant foot coming out of somewhere. Oh, so you're supposed to. Oh, so you do wash your feet. Looks like there. you wash your feet, but and also you're supposed to wash that guy's feet. There's like a giant foot ghost. Brilliant. I just want to look around with my actual eyes. Okay, telephone booth got nothing. Okay. Geez, she's still at it. Is there something I'm not? We could try to recall again. Who's that? Can you like also, um, oh, that's right. She asked me to come here to help her look for one of the seven mysteries. Actually, I think I did some research into the seven mysteries of Honjo. I can't remember all too well. I should check my files. You piece. All right, let's look in the files again. Oh, he wrote about all of them. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna speed run it. You went away from it. I'm right there. No, we were on the first of them, the Fool's Procession. The first new one, I should say. A mysterious sale regaling an encounter had by a daimyo at his residence in Honjo's Ushijima, now Komagata High School. When walking around his estate, he heard the sound of music much like that of a Kagura performance. He commanded his people to find the source, but no matter how much they searched, the music would fade when one neared the Warigesui Canal. The source of the sound was never located. The story is also known as the Procession of the Tanuki, as many were of the belief that it must have been these mischievous tricksters behind it all. The Beckoning Light While walking along the road near Hoonji at night, one might spot a hazy lantern light up ahead, despite there being no one around. Following it will cause it to go out suddenly when getting near, but just when one fears the darkness might swallow them up, another light will appear further ahead, as if guiding the one who sees it. Some say the flame is benevolent, leading people to their homes, while others believe it is a monster leading people astray. Some even believe it's the vengeful spirit of someone that died, luring the lost to the land of the dead. The Haunting Clappers! Yay! As the evening bell, bell rings bell. in Iriecho, Near present-day Shumoku Bridge, a night watchman patrols the dark streets and announces his presence by shouting warnings about fires, all the while striking his wooden clappers. But tonight, the sound of another set of clappers answers back. He curiously claps his clappers together again, clack clack. The echo answers again. But no matter how hard he searches for the source of the second pair of clappers, he never finds it. Some say it was the work of a mischievous tanuki or kitsune, while others say it was a warning from the spirit of someone who lost their life in a terrible fire. Evergreen Beach. Once upon a time in North Okurabashi, a beautiful beech tree stood in the garden of Lord Shinden's residence, now known as the former Yasuda Gardens. It was so impressive that the house became known among the people as the beach residence. Somehow, no one had ever seen a single leaf fall from the tree. As rumors spread of the eternally green tree, it became known as the evergreen beech. However, this particular species of tree was actually an evergreen. So the lack of fallen leaves was nothing out of the ordinary. This had led people to say that the strangest part of this legend is the fact that it even became a legend at all. <laughs> the legend of the normal tree. That's what they're going to say about me in the future. The Taiko of Tsuguru. There was once a wunch. Wench. There was once a daimyo from the Hirosaki domain in Suguru who built a residence in Midoricho on a large piece of land. On this estate was an almost eight meter tall tower that served as a lookout for fires. Only a designated firefighter was allowed to use the large drum that resided atop a tower in the event of a fire. While most towers used wooden blocks to sound the fire alarm, for some reason this residence was permitted to use drums. The residence and its special privileges led to much speculation and gossip among the townsfolk. So that's just a drum in a tower that people were like, what's the deal with that? Hey, that's funny. Hey, that's Why weird. Why do they get to use a drum? Yeah, I don't get to use a drum. And that became a legend or a mystery. The foot washing mansion. 
This is the story of something that occurred in the dead of night in a residence in Mikasacho. Mikasacho. Modern day South Waria Gesui Street in Kamizawa. Aren't you glad I'm reading this? Yep. <laughs> it's even hard for me, all these words in a row. A foul smelling wind rattled the house. Suddenly, a giant foot, drenched in blood, smashed through the ceiling. Wash! It commanded. <laughs> Damn. After the servants carefully washed the foot, it returned from whence it came, fixing the roof it had broken. A man who had been visited by the foot every night asked a friend to trade houses with him. That night, the foot stopped appearing. <laughs> the foot wasn't into it anymore once the guy left. <laughs> so, why is this house so cheap? Be real with me. Well... Mm, no reason, no reason. <sighs> You won't believe this. But there's like a foot you have to wash every night. It, don't worry about it. You'll you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. <laughs> but then it never happens. Yeah. The one-sided reed. There was once an infamous rogue by the name of Tomezo who fell for a woman named Okoma. Tomezo persistently chased after Okoma, attempting to win her heart over and over again, but she rejected his advances each time. Enraged by her indifference to him, Tomezo brought a dagger to a canal near Ryogoku Bridge and attacked Okoma. All right, dude, get away. See, this is not... He cut the arm and leg off one side of her body, then threw them into the canal. Ever since then, the reeds growing along that canal have only sprouted leaves on one side. My Bro. dude. Bro, come on. Unacceptable behavior. Classic nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> the ever-burning lantern on a bone-chilling winter's night. One may happen upon a soba cart along the canal known as South Wari Gesui. But there is something strange about this cart. No matter when one might visit, its owner is nowhere to be found. Yet the lantern that hangs from it stays perpetually lit, burning brightly even with no oil to fuel it. Should one attempt to put out the flame, it immediately roars back to life. However, there is also the tale of the never burning lantern. <laughs> Another telling of this story in which the Soba cart's lantern always remains dark, refusing to be lit. My dudes. Okay, so like what's, a never burning lantern is just a lantern that's off. I love the idea. So these mysteries got like less interesting as we went on, less mysterious. This one I love because someone saw a reed where the leaves were going on one side and they're like, there's got to be a reason. Must be that lady that done got murdered. And I bet I know what the reason is. And that's the part that we should talk about. The fact that this reed only grows leaves on one side. Yeah. All right, let's fucking continue. Oh, wait, she's coming back this way. Hey, what was that just now? Huh? Didn't you hear that? I didn't hear anything. No, I didn't hear anything. You sure you didn't just imagine it? Hmm, maybe I did. But your special talent, you should have been able to hear it. Pay close, pay, pay closer attention for me, okay? My special talent? What are you talking about? Huh? I mean, your spirit sense. You look like you can handle your liquor. Huh? I have no idea what drinking has to do with it, but I don't think so. Hmm. Well, you must. I mean, you can see me, right? Huh? Shogo Okie, 1 a.m. Do you know where your Shogo Okie is? <laughs> I just want to take a quick peeky. Okay. I don't know how she's so comfortable talking about spirits and the paranormal at this time of night. Either she's got guts or she's just used to it. Unless, no, I can't be. Gotta talk to her face. Gotta talk to her face. Wait, wait, wait. You're kidding, right? About what? I mean, just now. It kind of sounded like you were saying that only people with spirit sense can see you. Of course that was a joke. Duh. You don't really think I'm some kind of evil spirit, do you? But yeah. I meant what I said about your spirit sense being strong. 
I bet you could down a whole gimlet in one gulp. Seriously. Damn. Who in the chat could down a whole gimlet in one gulp? Where's my gimlet gulpers at? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a gimlet gulper. That's the real reason I asked you to help me with the seven mysteries of Hanjo business. Okay, let me just clarify something. Are you saying you can actually see paranormal stuff? Sure. I can handle a solid muscle, mos Moscow, <laughs> you muscle. That's it. That's the name of the drink. <laughs> Why are you measuring this in terms of cocktails? Not a believer, huh? Well, that's not matter. But you have seen some weird stuff over the years, right? Weird stuff? Yeah, like things you could see but could never understand. You can't be serious. Anything spooky? Anything spooky? What if I look? It's an interesting looking playground. Let's continue our convo here. Well, I didn't know things were changing. Uh, sorry for interacting. Um, sure it sounds. I've seen ghost photos in magazines before, but are you telling me they really exist? You bet they do. But you can only recognize them if you really believe in them. So be careful. So even with my skill, I won't be able to see them if I doubt they exist? That's right. The spirit world is all about the mind and the soul. You won't be able to see a thing unless you're properly in tune. But sometimes people get caught up in the moment, thinking they might see something, and then they really do, because they believe they would. Is that how that works? Yep, just like drinking. You'll never know how much booze you can handle unless you're ready to down some shots. I'm still not sure I get the drinking thing. <laughs> you know, I realized how strange it was as the words left my mouth. Sheesh. Sheesh! They keep, like, popping me out of this conversation, and I keep being like, why? I think it's so you can pick a new option in the list. About alcohol. Totally unrelated, but do you actually drink? Real alcohol, I mean. Whoa, talk about whiplash. I didn't expect you to start making small talk. Well, our conversation was getting a bit dark. I figured a change of topic might lighten things up. Oh, I see. If you really want to know, I like to think I can handle a few drinks. But to tell you the truth, I've never actually had a Moscow mule. Really now? <laughs> I just thought it sounded cool. I would like to try it though. Why don't we go for a drink sometime then? Ooh, are you asking me out? Now you're just being a good Samaritan, right? No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'd be up for that. But only if we find one of the seven mysteries. Shogo, it's not worth it, dude. <laughs> Shogo, find a dip someone else to ask out to get a drink. <laughs> no, he likes bubbly girls that love me cult. <laughs> They're all like this. All right, then let's get to work. Oh. Why is, is there this more one about spirit sense? And if you can believe it, there might be hope for you, yeah. You can't be serious. I just remembered, I actually did some research on the seven mysteries of Honjo at the library. You did? What did you find? Well, I discovered a few interesting things. Oh, tell me everything. Are these really ghost stories? So, I read some of the stories, and none of them were, well, scary? I thought these were supposed to be ghost stories. That's true. They're more like a collection of superstitions, really. But there are some pretty disturbing ones in the mix. Yeah, like the one that's supposed to take place here, the Whispering Canal. People who fished in this canal would hear a voice call out saying, leave it. They had to abandon their catch or the canal would take it. Right, right. Is that what you're expecting to find here in this park? Um... Not quite. We were talking about a folklore from hundreds of years ago. After centuries of the telephone game, who knows if it's anything like the original story. So basically, you think the true story of the Whispering Canal might be completely different from what we know? Exactly. I'm sure it is. I mean, weren't you curious? About what? 
People from around here have the expression left at the canal, right? Meaning to abandon someone. This story is where it comes from. Except the story being told today is about fish. There's nothing in it about leaving people behind. Now that you mention it, that's true. So you're saying the original story maybe did involve someone being abandoned. That's what I'm trying to find out. Ah, gotcha. Seven mysteries? Although they're called the Seven Mysteries, the literature lists nine of them. Ooh, I'm surprised you picked up on that. Nice research. <laughs> surprised you can count. I thought you were dumb. I was being cute. Okay, I think you could see her little face. Look at her little face. She's got a little paw pillow. Laying on her paw. Some people think there could be up to 15. That's the thing about old folk tales. Stuff gets added to them over the years. That's more extra stories than main ones. Yeah, but the seven mysteries rolls off the tongue way better than nine or 15. If you say so. But it makes sense, don't you think? It's more likely to be passed on if it's easy to remember. Huh, that's a good point. I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious. Imagine being in mid-conversation with someone and after everything you say, you do a 360 spin. <laughs> have you hung out with a friend like in a dark park at night? Yeah, I have. They're always looking around like a bear's there. <laughs> I'm not camping with friends. They always think of the bear's waiting for nightfall to attack. I'm like, dog, the bear's asleep. Oh, by the way. We, were we talking about the Rite of Resurrection? Ooh, your memory is as strong as your tolerance. I'm going to start calling you Martini Man Sugar. Please don't. I'm really climbing up the drinks menu, huh? So, you know about it, huh? The Rite of Resurrection? A magazine ran a feature on it recently that got practically everyone talking about it. Really? Maybe that's where I heard about it. Still, I don't know. It seems a little too far-fetched to be true. So... The Rite of Resurrection. It's the forbidden art of bringing the dead back to life, concocted by a famous Onmyoji from an ancient age. Nice pronunciation. Thank you. Will I do it again? Probably not. Rumor has it, uh, an old manuscript containing actual concrete details about the rite was recently discovered. This rumor comes from the presentation given by local historian Hideki Araishi. Pretty and, good, but it's Hideki. You know, I thought I would trip at the second name. I know, me too. You got the second one really <laughs> good, actually. I was so focused on that one. Um, an academic conference. Hi, Deki. I'm dad. <laughs> Do you think that's what All Might says to Deku sometimes? Hi, Deku. You sure know a lot about this stuff. That's because I'm secretly a huge occult buff. I kind of got that. Oh. But if a researcher spoke about it at an academic conference, it must have some basis in fact. Exactly. That's why I believe the right of resurrection is real. Now I'm starting to believe it too. Good. The pursuit of knowledge starts with belief. I got that from Professor Araishi himself. Hmm. Wait, hang on. I've got another question. Hmm? You mentioned the Rite of Resurrection. Are you looking for that too? Does it have something to do with the Seven Mysteries of Honjo? Ooh, you're sharp. I could cut my finger on you. To tell the truth, it's actually the other way around. What do you mean? Mm, well, I started off searching for the Rite of Resurrection. And along the way, I realized that I needed to investigate the Seven Mysteries of Honjo first. I see. So then. Why are you looking for the right? If you're looking into a way to bring someone back from the dead, does that mean you've got someone you want to bring back? Um, you know what? Forget it. It just came to my mind, so I thought I'd ask. I didn't mean to pry. Sorry. No, it's fine. 
I figured I'd need to tell you at some point. It's... Ogo Pogo? <laughs> Ogo Pogo? I saw that name and had like a meltdown. I was like bracing myself for a really complicated <laughs> name and then I was like... Mm, there's so many circles in this. Ogo Pogo. It's... Ogo Pogo. Is this like her cat or something? Ogo Pogo? Yeah, I want to bring Ogopogo back to life. <laughs> he died in an accident about a month ago. <laughs> Sorry, Ogopogo. I don't mean to be disrespecting your dog. Rip Ogopogo. Ogopogo died. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah! It is a dog! Understand. It is a dog! Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes! <laughs> yeah! You and me both, girl. <laughs> oh, right. Ogopogo was my dog. I had him for eight years. I had mine for 14. Ah, okay. Your dog. Gotcha. You spent a long time together. Losing him must have been really hard for you. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not sure if the right even works on dogs. But as soon as I found out about it, I knew I'd have to give it a try. Have you tried adopting a cat? <laughs> two cats, even. It, ha have you tried two cats? I don't think I could forgive myself if I just let the opportunity pass by. Definitely. Now I understand why you feel so strongly about it. Don't be so reassured about this, my dude. Thanks for telling me. I know this must be hard to talk about. Hmm. But you know what? All that led to me meeting you. So at least something good came out of it. Though that doesn't mean I'll stop looking, obviously. Yoko, I'll do everything I can to help you. Why? <laughs> Ogo Pogo! You tell me you wouldn't do anything to save Ogo Pogo? I, listen, I would, but this man don't know Ogo Pogo. I don't need to know Ogo Pogo <laughs> to know that I would do anything. As long as we get Ogo Pogo back in the end, yeah. that's all I care about. Feel like pure shit, just want him back. Yeah. Yay! I'm so glad to hear that. Let's keep up the hard work then, yeah? So what's that got to do with the seven mysteries? So about the connection between this rite and the seven mysteries. Putting together everything we've talked about. My guess is that the original stories behind the seven mysteries, the true stories, are the key to finding the rite of resurrection. And that's why you're here searching for one of them. Do I have that right? Wow, 10 out of 10. You're proving to be quite the capable assistant. <laughs> I know, buddy. Wait, since when was I your assistant? Anyway, this is all just heresy. Her her heresy. Heresy. I was gonna say heresy, but that doesn't. This is all sense. just heresy. This is all just heresy, <laughs> but some say that what led to the seven mysteries coming to be was the rite of resurrection itself. Huh? Don't the stories come from the Edo period? I thought the rite of resurrection was supposed to be way older than that. Right. It seems that an Onmyoji from the Edo period rediscovered the ancient art. That old manuscript I mentioned with all the details on how to use the rite? Apparently it was written in the Edo period. Oh, right. I never told you its name. The manuscript is called The Record of Fates. The Record of Ragnaroks. Whoa, what a name. And it speculates that the secret of the rite is hidden within the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. So now, the seven mysteries are the hot new trend. Among who? You know, this whole thing's starting to sound pretty questionable. Come on, remember what I said about the pursuit of the unknown? It starts with belief, right. Whoa! Uh. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. <laughs> let's have a think about it. Let's, let's think. What was that just now? I'm scared. Oh. I was kind of convinced something was going to be behind me. It's you. You are the one. Yoko, are you okay? Uh, uh, uh. Hey, what's wrong? Stay with me. No, th this can't be. No, no. Uh. Um. 
I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my due diligence here. What? Why? Uh, yeah, I don't know what's happening to me, so I don't know what kind of... Uh... Yoko! Yoko! Sorry, Olive. Something's got Yoko really rattled. Is it the phone booth that's behind her? I feel eyes on my back. I can't move. Is there something behind me? I dog, I kept checking. Now's the time I'm supposed to check? There ain't nothing. Talk to her again? No? I'm all talked out. Is there something I'm supposed to be investigating? Yoko's pointing over here, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Still, she looks really spooked. I doubt she's making this up. Damn it, did I miss it? I did. Oh. Ugh, I don't get this. What's going on? Did something happen? Yoko? Oh! Oh, oh Noko! Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put the magnifying glass directly into your mouth. Huh? Uh... Huh? What the... What is something... What is it? Why is this happening? <laughs> Someone in chat said, vaccinated? Question mark, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Still 1 a.m. <laughs> oh. It's cringing. Yoko, answer me. Yoko? No way. It can't be. Why? Why? Uh. Oh, shit! Ah! <laughs> what the hell just happened? No, damn it. I've got bigger problems. Yoko, just hold on. Everything's going to be okay. Oh, God. She's not breathing. She's cold, and I don't feel a pulse. This can't be happening. Okay, okay, okay. An ambulance, right. I've got to call an ambulance. I need a phone. Right, the phone. I I've got to call an ambulance. Hey, sweetie. I called it in. The ambulance shouldn't be long. But is it going to make a difference? Her body's gone stiff, and her skin is cold, and I don't think she's breathing. She looks more like a mannequin than a person now. I don't think there's any coming back from that. I don't get it. Just a few minutes ago, we were chatting away without a care in the world. Yoko. How did this happen? How could someone so bright and bubbly just suddenly drop dead? Resurrect her. Huh? No, we gotta use that for the dog. Oh, that's right. If that rite of resurrection she was talking about really does exist, there might be a way to bring her back. If someone could just drop dead out of nowhere like, like they were cursed, then why shouldn't there be a way to bring them back to life? Yoko believed in it, so if I believe in her, it seems completely possible. Maybe, just maybe, I could still save her. Even if I've got to deal with spirit senses and curses and whatever, I've got to try. Wait for me, Yoko, I promise. I'll use the rite of resurrection to bring you back. Right before she died, I felt a strange presence a few times. And it seemed like she saw something, something that shook her to the bone. There's definitely something strange going on, and maybe it's still here. What could she have seen? Standing by this body. He stanced up. She mentioned that the Rite of Resurrection and Seven Mysteries were connected. So maybe whatever it was she saw had something to do with that whispering canal. Whoa! Damn it, that presence again! 
It must be around here somewhere, but where? Huh? There's something on the ground. It's a dookie. Did Yoko drop this? Oh. You want a fishy? <laughs> I didn't notice it till now, but there's a small wooden sculpture by her side. It's three or four centimeters tall. It looks like it could be a keychain, but from how it rotted, it's way too old for that. Despite how tiny it is, I feel an almost palpable malice radiating from it. What the hell is this thing? Cursed stone acquired. The Whispering Canal. This feels awful. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm keeping it. Ugh. What the? Are these the Whispering Canal's memories? Gah! Such deep sorrow. A resentful memory is flowing into my mind. Kill them. Kill them. Oh, they walk away. Kill them all. You've acquired the power of the curse stone, the Whispering Canal. You Yay! Can, you can use it to kill those who walk away from you. Press the use curse button to kill your target as they attempt to depart. Who the hell are we using that <laughs> who on? Who are we going to be killing? Ah! A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. No. Now. Kill. kill. Can you hear it, curse bearer? Oh, who so strongly desires the right. I don't know why I trust this voice. That seems impossible to maintain. Kill them. Should you seek life's restoration, take your curse in hand. Reap lives by the skull. And claim their soul dregs for your own. Dark souls? Dark souls. Looked enough to sate this vessel. Someone wants me to use the TikTok voice. And by their sacrifice, Claim the gift of resurrection. <laughs> My husband. <laughs> Claimed the gift of resurrection. <laughs> or better yet, slay your fellow curse bearers. For theirs are the equal of droves of lesser souls. Now, Go forth and kill. Files updated. What the hell was that? It was like the curse's memories flowed directly into my mind. Peace out. In an instant, I understood everything. When I picked up this cursed stone, the Whispering Canal must have cursed me. Shogo truly was like, hey, I just met you and you're dead. And, and I this think is crazy. I'll, I, yeah, and this is crazy. I think I'll kill someone to bring you back. Kill a lot of people. I'll kill a lot of people to bring you back. I also heard a strange voice. It told me that if I want the right, I have to kill a bunch of people with this cursed stone and collect their souls. I guess it's good to know that the right really exists, but this thing wants me to kill people to get it? Screw that. Putting my own life on the line is one thing. Murdering other people is another thing entirely. And not just one person either. Scores, it said. So this is the curse of the Whispering Canal, huh? A curse that traps the soul of anyone who tries to walk away from me. But, if I use it and collect enough souls, then I'll be able to bring Yoko back. And there was something about other curse bearers being worth more soul dregs. Jeez. I'm really at a loss here. Oh. Same. Still hanging out, Yoko? It's nice. Shadowy oh. figure. What is that? Huh? The hell is that? It looks like a light floating in midair. 
We don't want to investigate it further, I guess. I can zoom. All right. All right, I'm just making sure there's nothing else. Uh, okay, shadowy figure. How about that shadowy figure, huh? Now that I look closer, is there someone there? Did I, think, I draw this man? I think there is someone there, yeah. You can't see me. <laughs> he's I'm not behind even, the tree. He's not even behind the tree. I'm next to the tree. He's just standing there. Let's call out. Hey, who's there? Swoop. Swoop. <laughs> oh my. How unexpected. Swoop. Swoop. It was your curse that killed that poor woman, I take it. What? Cat got your tongue, Mr. Okie. This dude is a Julia. Yeah! Huh? Hi, Olive. Ah. Wanna go up here? A tall, humorless looking man. He doesn't look familiar to me. He's acting like he knows me though. Have we met somewhere before? <laughs> depressed Phoenix Wright. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like depressed Phoenix Wright. Who are you? And how do you know my name? Do you mean to say you don't recognize me? <coughs> this comes as a bit of a shock, I must say. Look a little harder and I dare say it will jog your memory. What's with this guy? Let's have a think about it. That man, who is he? He looks to be in his 30s or 40s. He's all dressed up in a suit and tie, but somehow he looks real shady. What's he doing here? Was he watching us all this time? Something tells me curses are nothing new to him. If he's one of the other curse bearers, then I need to be careful. He might be here to kill me and take my curse stone. But by the same token, killing him will net me a lot of soul dregs. I can't kill a character I designed. Come on. I still don't have a clue who you are. How do you know me? Have we met? Dear me. It is always humbling to find that one is not as well known as one believes. Perhaps my name will help you remember. I am Takumi Yumioka. Takumi Yumioka? Does that ring any bells? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Maybe. So you do not even know my name. How disappointing. Disappointing, but fortuitous. Mysterious stranger. Well then, Mr. Okie, allow me to make you a proposition. <laughs> She's still back there. You have a curse stone in your possession. I would like you to give it to me. How do you know? How do you know about that? Why, I saw the whole thing. That doesn't explain how you know what a curse stone is. Even I barely have a handle on it. You know about the seven mysteries of Honjo and their curses and all that, don't you? But of course, those cursed stones, they are terribly dangerous things, capable of killing without a trace so long as their conditions are met. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah. How did you think about it then? <laughs> Imagine what might happen if one fell into the wrong hands. They would be safer in mine, don't you agree? Although it seems I arrived too late to stop you from killing that poor woman. What are you- that wasn't me! I am willing to overlook your indiscretion, but only if you give me your cursed stone. No way in hell! For all I know, the wrong hands are yours! Very well. I had hoped to settle this amicably. But you leave me no choice. This Takumi guy must have a cursed stone of his own. He must. At least, it'd be safer to assume so. It would explain how he knows so damn much. 
so he can kill me instantly as long as he fulfills his stone's conditions. Until I know what those conditions are, I can't make any sudden moves. I have to keep him talking, learn what I can, and figure out a way to get my curse out first. How can I get him to leave me behind? I have to be really annoying. <laughs> Though it would be a waste not to take this chance to find out about the other curse bearers. I should tell him about crypto. <laughs> oh, we got a curse duel on our hands. Wait, I want to make sure. Okay. I want to look away from him just in case, but there's a floating guy. Well, our curse is the turnaround one. Oh, he's closer. What the hell? Whoa, it's coming closer. Is this another one of the seven mysteries? It looks like a will-o'-wisp, maybe. Was there anything like that in the seven mysteries? Yeah, the lantern thing. So what do we do with it? Let's, let's look it up. That must be his curse. Oh, yeah. Um, These are just the new ones. The beckoning light, was that it? It goes out when they get near, but when one fears the darkness, another light appears further ahead. So... But this one's coming closer. Is this a soul drag? I feel like it's gotta have to do with his, uh... His thing. His curse. Guess for now we... Is there any others? Okay, it's just the one. Should we talk to him again? I need a topic that'll keep him talking. My best bet would be... <laughs> What's up with that light? <laughs> just ask him about it. <laughs> What's up with that weird ball of light? Is that your curse? Whatever do you mean? I'm afraid I see no such thing. Huh? But it's right... Huh? It's gone. It was right there. I see. It seems you've become the mark of another curse bearer. So is it not his curse, but a different person's curse? Okay, I'm just making sure it's not like over my head. Should we ask about him? I doubt he'll say anything, but... Before I give you my cursed stone, I want to know who you are. I need to know if I can trust you. <laughs> mm. I've reason. got such a thing for tired-looking, dead-eyed yeah. characters. Yeah. A reasonable enough concern. Very well. I'm an associate of the great sorcerer, Swigen. The ads have started. It starts in... Oh, it starts in. Okay. Suigen Gamyodo. Suigen Gamyodo? Indeed. You must have heard of him. I believe he was recently featured in a certain magazine. Your unfortunate companion there came seeking his counsel not a few days ago. It was from her that I learned your name. I thought she would have mentioned me to you, but it seems I was presumptuous of me. And when did this happen? Why, just two or three days ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not buying that. He knows I don't know who he is, so he's just trying to feed me a story. I've only known Yoko for a month, but she never mentioned going to see some mystic. Although it is Yoko we're talking about here, so it's hard to say for sure. I hope that is enough to convince you that my hands are more than trustworthy. So that wisp better not be around here. It's not like under me, right? Well, I don't see it. No, I think it's fine. Okay. How do I know it wasn't you who killed Yoko with your curse? Mr. Okie, if you are hoping to trick me into revealing whether I possess a curse stone, I assure you, you cannot. 
It is your curse that was responsible, Mr. Okie, no matter what you might tell yourself. That doesn't make sense. I only found this after Yoko died. Oh? Don't play dumb. I know you're the one who did this. Whether you choose to believe me is your prerogative, but you are mistaken. But you should know that multiple curses awake cur curses? Curses awakened at once at the stroke of midnight. There are many other curses in Honjo, and many other curse bearers. Is it not premature of you to assume that I am the one responsible? Wait, so you're saying that at midnight a bunch of people became curse bearers? There's no point in continuing this conversation. For all I know, he could be telling me anything. Uh, ads? Yeah. Do a little ads pause. Advertisements, 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 advertisements. Oh, olives over my head. Yeah, you got a little olive halo. She's cute. She is cute. You want to try the new tea I got? Yeah, how is it? It's very smooth. I'm sorry. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a nice sleepy tea. Yeah. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. This is a cool game so far. Yeah. I really like the setting and and vibe. Yeah, it's very cool. I'm excited to learn more. What kind of tea? Um, there's a tea shop I really like uh, in Brooklyn. And they have like a bunch of custom batch teas. This one's called um, Nightly Rest. It's like spearmint and chamomile and verbena and uh, a few other things. It's really nice. I've seen some other people in chat saying they played this game before and really love it. Good. So that's cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You're not seeing ads because ads are still starting soon. Yeah. Sometimes they, oh, well, there they go. There they go. They like to wait until I mention them. And then they start. They're shy. I do need to water Mr. Plant. Go water yeah. Mr. Plant. Do I have any post-punk recommendations? Trying to get into the genre besides the modern stuff. I mean, most of my recommendations would probably be the modern stuff. I really like Idols. Turnstile? Turnstile is not really post punk. Um, I really like Black Country New Road, if they count. I really like, uh, what's that other band called? I gotta look at my phone. I thought you had to water Mr. Plant. I'm gonna water Mr. Plant, but somebody asked me about post punk. Someone said squid. Everhood's getting a sequel? That's fun. Love that game. I listen to that soundtrack sometimes. Oh, Viagra Boys? You listen to it? Yeah, Proto Martyr too. Proto Martyr's great. And Viagra Boys. There's lots of good stuff out there. <coughs> what are you, sick? My throat just feels funny. I've had a headache vaguely all day. All right, I'm gonna water Mr. Plant. Do it. Please show off Mr. Plant. Mr. Plant. Doing very well. He recovered well. really well. Yeah. I see we got a few new guys growing in right here and right here. He's got some trimmed leaves because they got singed. Yeah. Hello. It's a bee. Sorry, I'm yawning. I hope that anyone who attended the draw class on Friday found it helpful to them. I'm sorry that I had to speed up towards the end to cover everything. But I hope it was still comprehensive. Have I played any new games recently? Yeah. 
What have they been? I've been getting back into Hardship Breakers. Because I played a lot of that a while ago, and then I just never, like, finished it. Um, playing this one. I just bought a bunch of new games that I tried. But I'm in, like, a antsy, fidgety mood where every game just feels like I'm uh, not having fun, or it feels like it's just, like I'm just uh, trying to pass the time. But I think I'll get back into Nier Automata soon, because there's a lot of endings I have not done. I did play a lot of Tears of the Kingdom, but I don't love it. Controversial opinion. Yeah, we both kind of felt the same way about it. Because the thing that interests me is like exploring the area and I just feel like um, Tears of the Kingdom kind of punishes you for that by throwing a million enemies at you and then like you use up all the good weapons you have and then you get thrown into a fight that's way too hard and then you're left with like five sticks in your inventory. Um... I got to like these really cool ruins and I had such like a magical moment and then a goblin came out while I was looking at something and smacked me and I died and I was really irritated <laughs> and I just put it down. I was like, just let me, just let me have some wonder and awe. It I don't like, want to be fighting constantly. It felt like Breath of the Wild was all about the wonder and the awe yeah. and like exploring these like big sort of lonely environments and yeah like getting lost and stumbling upon cool things and it feels like tears of the kingdom is like just way much more jam-packed with things yeah to the point where i never feel like i have like a second to like just take in my environment yeah it's like too much stuff there's I, like too many things i like it to be a little more um vibey and i know they want me to like interact with the mechanics or something and like play around and make items and that is fun when I get to do it but I like that's not what interests me so I didn't love Tears of the Kingdom yeah I think if I had up if I upgraded my armor a bunch I'd probably have like it more yeah but I didn't even feel like doing that like I didn't want to materials grind I also and I, I will stop harking on this in a moment because I know that a lot of people love Tears of the Kingdom but it does um, a lot of things amazingly well oh it's great um, it's just like for me personally, I'm not having like the time that I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, Tears of the Kingdom. My other complaint is that every temple or every like place you go to in Tears of the Kingdom treats you like you're five years old and you've never played a video game before. They're like, huh, Link, there's a bunch of locks on this door. What do we do about it? There's a big glowing button over there. Should we press it? <laughs> and you press it, and your character, your you know, whoever you're with is just like, whoa! You pressed it. One, one of the, of the locks, locks is gone away. That leaves you four more blocks. And I'm like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Just let me do the puzzle. Just it, let me go. It felt like they unlearned the lessons they had learned when they made Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Because they didn't really do that as much in Breath of the Wild. They I don't didn't. know why they like went back. Most Zelda games are like, here's the thing. And you're like, cool, let me interact with the thing. And then it's like, good job. You see what that did? Go. And this one instead, like everyone you're with, just uh, treats you like you're having a nice day out from the you know old folks facility. It's like, I don't know, it's weird. There's a lot of things I like about the game, but this is why I haven't continued playing them. Yeah. Um, I love the mechanic of just going through a floor or a ceiling. Yeah, I love that. That's I'm like, really just cool. Just let me skip all this. Thank you. You ready to get back to it? Yeah. Also, something that made me laugh while I was playing the game is that um, I love that every time you see Raru's team, it's like the coolest squad you'll ever see in your life and they're all badasses and they're all doing like cool combat roles and then you get to your team and it's like a child, an idiot, <laughs> a 
<laughs> it's like, put me back there. It's like a child, two idiots. I want to be back there with them. Yeah, and they're all like, yay, on an adventure. Uh, anyway, those are my comments. I just thought that was funny. It felt very appropriate for Link, but okay. Let's do the curse bearers. Yeah. For each of the seven mysteries, there's a curse and a curse bearer, right? Do you know who any of the others are? And what would you do with that information? Your intentions are nothing untoward, I hope. It is in the hearts of the selfish and insipid of those who would be most tempted by the right of resurrection that curses take root. And a curse's resentful memories. Sorry, I wasn't expecting all of those things together. A curse's resentful memories impart a powerful urge to kill, as I am certain you are aware. No. <laughs> you are a victim of circumstance, Mr. Rokie. But your situation is exceedingly dangerous. You must relinquish your cursed stone for your own benefit before it is too late. Too late? It's already too late. There's no going back. All I can do is keep pressing forward. For this woman, I barely know. And if you're going to stand in my way, then I'll have to stop you. Am I to take that as a threat, Mr. Okie? I would encourage you to exercise more discretion before you fall foul of a curse. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. I'm looking for the little spirit. Why are you so convinced it was my curse that killed Yoko? Why, it is simply that... Hmm? Huh? Would you believe I just saw your companion move? She what? I mean, she has like a bunch of water before I turn around. She has a bunch of water coming out of her mouth like she was in a canal. That's true. Sort of thing. So that was my assumption. Did the spirit go into her? Yoko? Wait, she doesn't look any different. <laughs> oh, you he killed us, huh? <laughs> no. He really did a look over there. Damn it. Oh. Shogo Okie, <laughs> deceased. Stream over! My, my, Yamli, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but perhaps you ought to be more careful about turning your back on unscrupulous individuals. Fear not, you may make as many attempts as you please from before your unfortunate mishap. Okay. Very well, just remember, whatever you do, do not turn around. Turn around. All right. Chat him up again. I know you, motherfucker. Why are you turning around? I just told you not to. We, we've looked for the spirit many a time. Takumi Yumioka, he said his name was. He hasn't taken his eyes off me for a second. Even now, he's still staring right at me. Who the hell is he? Maybe if I focus, I can recall something useful. Takumi Yumioka. How the hell does he know me? It's not like I've been getting out much. I barely have a life outside of work. Wait, that's it. My work, that's how he knows me. I've never actually met him, so it totally slipped my mind. What? The secretary to the chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps, a chemical company. Isn't that the one we work for? It is, yes. He worships the company chairwoman. Wow. He's pathetic. Karina would love him. I mean, we all love him for different reasons. Swigen Gamyoto, my ass. 
This guy thinks he can sell me anything. Swigin gun, Yomo. <laughs> you didn't, didn't even say it right. <laughs> But I don't know if having figured that out helps me as much so much right now. So you can gum Yodo my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you really thought it was a good one, huh? <laughs> you work at Hihaku Soaps, just like me. You're the chairwoman's secretary. Well, that took you long enough. Your lack of company loyalty is frankly astounding. Allow me to reiterate my request. Then... Not as a stranger, but as your superior. Hey, we're not at the office. You don't get to push me around like that. Why is our chairwoman secretary even out looking for cursed stones anyway? I re oh. I refrain from revealing myself precisely to avoid such questions, but I suppose needs must. Since the dawn of the Showa era, the land of Hanjo has nurtured our company's growth and vice versa. It is our duty to ensure that curses do not take root in this land we know as our home. I'm not sure I buy that. Like many things, it is not a matter that concerns the rank and file. The chairwoman has no desire to spread fear through our beloved company's birthplace. Now, if that is all, I must insist that you hand me your curse stone. What do you want with my cursed stone, anyway? I intend to seal it away in a secure location so that it may never be used again. I am certain that you, too, would rather be free of this burden. The power to kill without fear of consequence is, in itself, a curse. There are many near duels. Did I do that right? Do you know the term near duels? No. There what are the many hell? ne'er do wells in this <laughs> world who could not resist the urge to use it. All the more so if promised the chance to resurrect the dead. You'll seal it away? How? I will put it in the care of a sorcerer who is well versed in supernatural matters. If I have gained your trust, I must ask you to hand me your cursed stone. Don't turn your back on him. We gotta figure it out. We gotta think. He works at Hihaku Soaps, just like me. He's the secretary to the chairwoman, Natsue Yamamori. No wonder I didn't recognize him. He's way above us lowly peons. I've only ever seen him in the company bulletins. But he knew who I was. Could he have memorized the names and faces of everyone in the company? Let's do a think. If I want to use my curse on him, I have to get him to walk away and leave me behind. Now what would convince him to do that? Scenario 1, he does what he came here to do. Scenario 2, he suddenly needs to be somewhere else. He's probably here for my curse stone, so I don't think I'd get out of Scenario 1 alive. Scenario 2 means hoping something will happen by chance, and luck is rarely on my side. So my only hope is Scenario 3. Something makes it impossible for him to stay. I don't have to keep him away forever, I just need to get him to walk away once. Wait, I've got it. Do we lie to him or something? I know how I can convince him to leave. Convince him to leave! Hey, leave! <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh crap, I totally forgot! What is it? Oh, no, I feel like if I say I called an ambulance, he would just be like, okay, stabby, stabby, I'll take it now, thank you. Hand over a cursed stone. I mean, I think I called an ambulance is the only one that makes sense, right? Something just came up. I had dinner and plans you, at two in the morning. You have to leave. Uh, I called an ambulance. Oh, right, I forgot to mention I called an ambulance. It should be coming any minute now. An ambulance? Have you lost your mind? They will arrive to find you standing next to a corpse, alone, in the dead of night. No doubt they will hand you over to the police, who ha will have some questions for you. Probably, but I'm sticking with Yoko. Unless you want to join me in an interrogation room, you better get out of here. You're telling the truth, I see. They're getting closer by the second. 
I cannot afford to be waylaid at this juncture. I fear I must take my leave. But he hasn't started walking away yet. Do I press the button? No, we gotta wait till he turns away. Okay. Sooner or later, I will return for your cursed stone. I only hope you do not abuse it in the meantime. Do we have to kill him? I mean, I don't think so. I think that's part of the choice we have. Should we kill him? So we could just, like, let him leave. Maybe. I, I think he's, like, fine. So it's either we murder or we don't murder. Do we murder or not? Let's, uh... He did murder us. That's true. We know he will murder. Yeah. But do we murder? Do we murder? Do he murder? He murder, but do we murder? He murderer, we murderer? Hmm. Mm. I think we let him go. All right. And see what happens. Maybe you can turn it around for us at the end. <laughs> well then, I bid you good evening. So this, this is, is this, this is, is the where murder. you kill me. This Feel is free where to kill, kill me, me right now if you want to do it. Shogo Okie, you dare? I didn't do it. I didn't press any buttons. Did we auto kill him? We auto killed him. We toasted him. I didn't press it. We toasted him. I didn't press the button. He's dead. He's really dead. So this is what a curse stone can do. I didn't press the button. It just happened on its own. Whoa. 1% soul dregs. Damn, his soul was only worth 1%. Well, he's not a curse user, right? As far as we know. Oh, right. Or maybe he is. Was that like scripted or was there a uh, uh, uh oh in the mechanics? I mean, it might just be scripted. I left the park immediately. Oh, right. We're Yamli. We're not Shogo. We're not Shogo. That's interesting. Thank you. I felt bad for leaving Yoko, but I couldn't stay there. The emergency medical services will probably take care of her body. Takumi's too. This will be all over the news tomorrow. But until then, at least I know she'll be in a safe place. All right. I have to find my next sacrifice quickly. I've got no time to waste. I need to find the other curse bearers and collect their souls. Killing Takumi barely got me any soul drags. I guess he mustn't have been a curse bearer after all. It's not enough. The soul of a non-curse bearer amounts to little more than leftover breadcrumbs. I mean, he did stab us with like a knife. Yeah. So. I have to think of places where the other curse bearers of the seven mysteries would be. The curses were activated at around midnight. The others are bound to be active still. I should check to see if there are any other places with connections to the mysteries nearby. At the very least, another curse bearer might be thinking the same as me, meaning I could run into them. Let's see, which of the seven mysteries are closest? I'm in the Kinshicho area right now. The haunting clappers are on the other side of the Oyoko River, just over Shumoku Bridge. Uh, a haunting clap is when someone does it sarcastically after you've given your whole heart into something. <laughs> yeah. And it flops. Yeah. The foot washing mansion and the ever burning lantern are around South Wari Gesui Street, past the train tracks. 
and further along the Oyoko River, I'll find the beckoning light at Hoonji Bridge. Those three places are the closest. I guess I should start there. Let's have a quick think. I'll collect the other curse bearer's souls before dawn and bring Yoko back to life. I should go to another location connected to the seven mysteries of Honjo. All right. Curse stone. Okay. Let's move then. Uh, bridge? Head to the clappers. Let's go to the clappers. The Shumoku Bridge is supposedly where the bell from the haunting clappers story used to be. I wandered around here for a while, but I didn't see anything interesting. The only thing I found was what looks like a 100 yen lighter someone threw away. I picked up some trash off the street. I don't know if curses are vulnerable to fire, but maybe I'll find a use for it. We got a lighter. A lighter's always helpful. Yeah, probably good for um, the lantern. All right, let's go to this one. South Wari Gesu Street. Both the foot washing mansion and the ever burning lantern are from this area. This late at night, even a road as big as this one is silent as the grave. Is it just me or is it oddly dark around here? Could this be? The lantern? I know it's past midnight, but it still seems oddly dark around here. And this feeling, it's the same as from before. Um... Hello? Um... Hello? There, there's something over there. Is that a curse echo? A curse of the seven mysteries given form? I knew it, there's a curse bearer around here. Okay, I can't look behind me. Is that curse echo what's causing this darkness? It doesn't seem hostile. Is it trying to tell me to come closer? What should I do? Let's, ob so let's observe. Let's observe. No, approaching it would be stupid. I should keep my distance. Can we use the lighter? No. Alright, I guess we have to get a little closer then. Nothing's gonna happen if I just sit and wait. Let's check it out. I just said it was stupid to do this. Oh, isn't it like you can't fear the darkness or whatever? Darn it, now what? Dang it! This isn't a curse doing this. Somebody's pulling me in. Ah, that hurt. Looks like I'm inside a building? Did it toss me in here? I can't see squat. Is this the same darkness from the curse echo? Can I use the lighter now? That's right, I still have the lighter I picked up earlier. Perfect, it works. Now I can make out my surroundings a bit better. What the? Something. Dude, he's got a light! That ruins everything! <laughs> dude. <laughs> didn't say dude. <laughs> Drat! Dude, he's got a light! Someone there? Are you a curse bearer? It's over. Time to get out of here. Wait, he's running? Was he right here this whole time? This is my chance. Ah. Oh, what the... Right. Dude. dude! I'm dying over here, dude! Oh, dude. <sighs> that was a close one. I didn't catch a glimpse of the curse bearer, but it seems like I'm alright. I didn't press the button, I just want y'all to know. I didn't even know who it was, I didn't know who we were killing! Curse Stone is gaining 30% soul drags, I didn't even have to see that guy to nope. toast him. 
His curse must have had something to do with light and darkness. My guess would be the ever-burning lantern? So there's a connection between the seven mysteries and the way their curses work. That might be useful to know. Easy murder. Easy. Easy is murder of my life. Where's the dude's body? Is it still in the still building? Still in the building, I guess. We just left. We don't even get to see who we killed? Ah, fuck him. Damn. Next. Next on the list. Next. <laughs> Should we try... Shimoku Bridge again? Because he said that we're connected. Go oh, back no. and look. I mean, we could go to either one, I guess. Let's go look. Take a peeky. You want to take a peeky? Anything show up here? Nope. Okay. No, no haunting clappers here right now. Oh, who's this partner? Howdy, partner. I'm here at Hoonji Bridge, the location linked with the beckoning light. Hardly anyone's around. Not surprising, seeing as it's past two in the morning. Feels like the whole world's gone to sleep. Uh, so let's just review the one that we're on. Beckoning light, right? Well, well we just that's did the one we just light. did. Yeah. Right. I don't know which one this is. Was it the mansion? It said the mansion oh, was yeah. here and yeah, yeah, something yeah. else. The mansion and another one. Foot washing mansion? Can you scroll down more? Oh, the ever burning lantern is the one. Okay. And the mansion were here. Okay. So we're on the mansion right now, right? Because we yeah. just did the ever burning. Or maybe the ever burning lantern was the one we just did. That's what I think. Yeah. So I think we're on the mansion now. Got it. And the beckoning light. A man who had been visited by the foot every night. This is night, the foot one. Yeah, asked a friend to trade houses with them. Then they... Foot stopped appearing. Hoonji Bridge is a pretty unusual structure. The ends are stone, but the middle is steel. The Oyoko River beneath it is actually a canal that was dug during the Edo period. Man. Someone standing on the bridge, silhouetting themselves against the sky. We always do an observe. Whoa! Wait, wait, wait. Fine, I'll go first. Whoa. Hmm, I see, I see. Interesting. Well, now, this is a surprise. Huh? Who are you? Who are you? If you've got the wrong guy, just say so. He's a flamboyant fellow. I wouldn't bat an eyelid if this an eyelid. <laughs> I wouldn't bat an eyelid if this were the inner city, but he stands out like a sore thumb in these parts. The eyelid was the like companion to the iPod, right? Yeah, the eyelid is yeah. what it was in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> I got all me music, all me eyelid. <laughs> Oh, God. Come now. It won't hurt to at least tell me your name. I think it might hurt. Let's ask what he's doing here. Very good. You shouldn't give up your name so easily, especially not to strangers. Gone is the age when might made right. Nowadays, it's information that rules the world. You'd do well to remember that. You're the one who asked. Your name, your address, your phone number, your age, your occupation, your personal information is much more valuable than you might think. This guy's really going off, huh? Yeah. You should treat those things with care. So I guess you don't plan on telling me anything either then. You can call me <laughs> Richter Kai, private detective. <laughs> this dude rules. Yep. He might be my favorite so far. But didn't you just say not to... Never mind. You say you're a detective? That's correct. I'm a man who deals in secrets. Don't expect me to share any more information with you, though. I only told you so that we could have understanding. 
Richter Kai. What's a detective doing around here? Working. And that's all I'll say about that. I could ask you the same thing, though. This seems like a strange place to stop. What brought you here? <laughs> Why should I tell you? Hit him with that. Why should I tell you? I see. Clearly, you didn't stop here just for a chance to talk to me. Which begs the question, what did you expect to find here? Maybe this bridge simply appeals to you? But then, why would you go out of your way to drop by in the middle of the night? It's none of your business. No, don't worry about it. I think I'm in the wrong place anyway. If you ever need a hand, I'd be happy to help. It's all in a day's work for an investigator extraordinaire. Thanks. I'll try looking somewhere else for now. Really? Well, I'm sorry I couldn't be any more help. It doesn't seem like he has anything to do with the curse bearers. I should move on. If he's been here for as long as he says, there's a good chance he's seen something. But I don't think it's worth asking. He seems like all kinds of trouble. The other side is an industrial district. And further down from the bridge is the temple from which it gets its name. Alright, well are we at a good stopping point here? I think so. Sorry, the controller vibrated in a weird spot. Yeah, right. Yeah. It like vibrates more sometimes than others. Don't know what that's about. Nope. It's a cool game though. Yeah. I'm, I'm digging it so far. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Uh, again, it's Paranorma Site, The Seven Mysteries of Honjo, if you're interested in picking it up. Yes. Um, but I love stuff like this. Yeah, it's very fun and very cool. But uh, thank you for watching, everyone. I appreciate y'all coming in. And... um. That's it for this one. We'll be back tomorrow on tomorrow Drawfee. on Drawfee stream. Yep. And then we'll be back on Wednesday with more potionomics. Yeah, probably some more potionomics. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right. Thanks, everyone. That's it. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.